Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good. I, think you, I think you did the best on that one, Phil. Good to, good to hear you this morning. So it's good to be with you this morning and uh, certainly welcome out to St. Clair Baptist Church. And if you're joining with us on uh, social media this morning, we're glad to have you. hate that you may not get to eat with us, but maybe you can text somebody and they can bring you a plate. So I hope that everybody that's come today is prepared to stay after as we're going to be celebrating uh, Thanksgiving slash homecoming. Uh, and Jim's going to be talking about homecoming here in just a bit, but uh, our church being recognized recently uh, for the longevity of St. Clair uh, Baptist Church, and is going to be talking about that. So it's exciting times to be here. Uh, to get us started, uh, we had a, uh, in Sunday school this morning, a very appropriate um, reading out of Psalm 100 here, uh, you know, only five verses. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. So, if you needed a reason to be excited this morning or fulfilled, uh, let those verses do that for you, uh, because we have a lot of reasons to be excited this morning, uh, and fellowship uh, not being any small part of that, being together today, uh, but knowing what God's promises are. You are loved greatly by him today, and as we think about being the sheep of his pasture, it reminded me this morning uh, that we're all on that even playing field. None of us are better than the other. And in God's eyes, he loves us all. Uh, and he's our shepherd. Uh, so, you know, the sheep hear his voice. And if you don't hear that voice, uh, today's an opportunity to make him your shepherd, your savior. And we pray that the horse be prepared uh, for that. So uh, we're looking forward, to, um, looking forward to that fellowship afterward. So I want to go through some announcements. Uh, we've, got a, we've got a lot of things coming up uh, with our church. Uh, December the 4th, uh, absolutely, Sue and Evie's birthday party, so uh, Harold needed that RSVP by December the 1st, so he'd know how much food to order. Uh, it's going to be a birthday party from 12 to 2, and from 12 to 1 will be the party, and then from uh, 1 to 2 is going to be some fellowship and uh, whatever Harold has planned for that. So everybody's invited. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet in the foyer, or let Harold know whatever's good for you there, and looking forward to that. December the 5th is the Hanging of the Greens, uh, and that's at 10.45 a.m., so uh, that's just a really uh, spectacular thing. Uh, we started uh, a couple, three years ago. We didn't get to do it last year uh, because of the uh, COVID, but uh, looking forward to that. Uh, and I was trying to think, do we, on the flower order is... The points that the list is back there, okay. red in honor of, white in memory of, and if we can kind of close that out probably next Sunday. That's what I was looking for. So next Sunday... Uh, and so those poinsettias will be walked up and those names read and they'll be stacked up here. Uh, it's a real good opportunity there. You get to take them home afterwards, uh, $6 each, and you can do either in memory of somebody or in honor of somebody. The sheets are in the foyer uh, for you to be able to accomplish that. So, And also, as far as participation in that service, to sign up for that as well. And then I'll be getting with everyone next week. Okay, perfect. Uh, it's, a really, it's a really good uh, program. Uh, December the 10th and the 11th will be our live nativity scene that we'll have outside and people, uh, from the members of the public will be able to drive uh, through that and around the building there. It's going to be on from 6 to 8 p.m. each night, December the 10th and the 11th. And I'm probably certain that there's still opportunity uh, and room for help with that as well. And there's a sheet in the back for that. Anything else on that that we... Yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and make that our, our mission today to go ahead and get signed up and uh, sometime if you could cruise around the foyer there, there's a lot of opportunity uh, to be involved in, in a lot of meaningful things. Uh, November the 28th starts the uh, Lottie Moon Week of Prayer and uh, also in our church council uh, last week we were looking to ask church members to bring in non-perishable food donations. Uh, to be able to put some together, to be able to take out and distribute to different families. And also, if you could let us know of any families that may be in need 
uh, with that. So, and also a list of people uh, that are not able to make it out to church right now. Uh, Mike, I want to join on to that with something that the church has an opportunity to do. Uh, Villa was reached, they reached out to Villa from the elementary school. Um, there is a list of about 90 children's names and the teachers and faculty, faculty of the elementary school has taken care of about 50 of them, but there's about 40 children in our community or in our city that are just not going to have a Christmas or have a limited uh, Christmas this year. So we took 10 of those, and in the back foyer back there, there is an envelope, and a brown envelope that has the uh, Spring City Elementary School uh, envelope's name on it. And there's a, a place for 10 people to sign up. Inside that is an envelope that has about the child, about their needs, whatever that they would like. That doesn't mean you have to get everything on that list. Certainly anything that can be get, got for those kids would be appreciated. If we could have those gifts back here by the 20th, that would be the Monday before Christmas, then we are going to get that, get the parents notified, get them to come by here if it is where they can. If not, we will reach out to those families. If all 10 names get picked and you want to just bring toiletry island items for those 10 children, we will accept anything. But I think anything the church can do to help these kids, these are children in our area that this church can impact. All right, wonderful opportunity there. So um, you heard what Connie said there. You take an envelope, it gives you the specifics uh, about what would be a good a recommendation for that child, but if all the envelopes are gone, there's, there's room for more. So just bring in however you're uh, led to do that. All right. Do we have any other announcements? Oh, one more announcement. Uh, no Wednesday night service this week. So uh, no Wednesday night service this week. All right. Any other announcements? All right. Let's move on to birthdays. Anybody have a birthday this past week? Alex had a birthday. Surely, huh? Surely you're not getting any older on us, Alex. <laughs> I remember telling Callie, uh, my daughter, when she was um, younger at one point, I said, hey, Callie, my mother and I have had a discussion. We've decided to keep you at the age you're at right now. And she started crying. And I think if she had had a number to child services, it would have gotten called. And she said, no, I want to grow up, you know. And how dare her mother and I uh, prevent her from doing that. So as I'm looking around and seeing the youth getting older and, uh, becoming more mature and what leaders you know that they are for us in our church they're leaders um, you know what an honor it is so happy birthday Alex any other birthdays Tim has one, Tim has one. happy birthday Tim <laughs> and, and Tim's like me you don't get any older now it's just kind of a recognition of the date that you were born right <laughs> uh, I didn't think you'd toss that one to the side there so any other birthdays okay Anniversaries? Anybody have a big Thanksgiving wedding? No? All right. Let's uh, invite our scripture readers up at this time. Genesis uh, chapter 28, verse 15. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land for I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. First John 1 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Matthew 25 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then he shall sit upon the throne of glory. Amen. Corinthians 4, 8 through 10. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifest in your in our body. Wow, amen. Anybody else? What, what great encouragement uh, Bible readers and uh, God's scripture is to us each and every Sunday. We appreciate, we appreciate those that uh, are obedient uh, to that calling and uh, share that with us uh, on Sunday. 
All right, let's look at our prayer requests that we have. And when I get done reading this list, will be an opportunity uh, for any updates or additions to our prayer list. So I'm going to read through those at this time. I have um, Cody Isham, Thelma Wood, um, Phil's niece uh, Monique, and he, he reminded us this morning before Sunday school that uh, she's very thankful for the prayers. Uh, also, her chemo is winding down and uh, with some improvements there. So continue to remember her. Uh, through her finishing of her chemo. Tommy Stennett, Chester Ezel, Phil Frechette, Connor Roy, Charbo Thompson, Billy McCowan, Kurt Smith, Brother Harold's uncle, uh, prays for Tina Peak with a good doctor report and continued prayers for her. Sue Smith, Doug Houston, Billy Thedford's father, Mary Knipe's grandparents, Ray Harrison, Jim and Robin Newby. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Amen. Uh, Jim and Robin Newby, missionaries, Al Shield, Dwayne Geno, Nancy Cranfield, Valerie and Harvey Robbins, O.R. Daniels, Tennille Smith. Uh, and that's a praise. Uh, she got a, a good doctor report and uh, prayers for future doctor visits. Uh, Rick Lefew, Julie Waldo, Eddie Bob Daniel. Stephen Leonard Newby, and I uh, got a report this morning that Steve is doing better. Uh, Barbara Roach with school program. Jay Barbier, William Kidd, Jennifer Tollett, Ray Raymond, Molly Duckett, Emily Walden, Boyd Cunningham, the family of Mike Cunningham, Alvin Harrison, Amy Rose, uh, Andrew the Theobald for salvation, Beth Fisher's dad, Lou Henry, Mary Hill, Stanley Cunningham, Harold Goins with upcoming test. Adam Brown uh, and Pauline had uh, phoned Marlene to thank the church for their prayers and request continued prayers for Adam. Uh, Kevin Letner, Unspokens, Jeff Island, Mike Ladd, Kelly Finan family, Troy Clark, Mark Sheldon's son, uh, Dr. Applegate, feeling better. Uh, praise for Wayne Loveday. Uh, Hannah, who'll be traveling this week. Um, Jim had uh, asked prayer for some uh, friends that he had who are brothers uh, there in Kentucky, and both of them have prostate cancer, uh, facing treatments. Uh, Kevin Collard with possible bone tumor. Uh, remember our lost and unsafe family members, and also vaccines and health care requirements. All right, what would we like to add or update to our prayer list at this time? granddaughter Nicole and I know Earlene will be appreciative of our prayers all right what else yeah. <clears throat> okay John Church's love out to Chester there. Thank you for that report, John. All right. Uh, Jerry Smith Jr. He's having some complications with the skin. He had to put in. And he's got to go back in for surgery. Okay. All right. What else? Here's Billy Tucker's family. What was that first name again? Billy. Billy Tucker. All right, anything else? All right. So just uh, remember uh, in our prayers, and we'll have copies of these uh, in the foyer, and also just to be in, uh, just be in prayer for St. Clair Baptist Church prayer list. It makes it easy for you. So, all right. Let's see here. Eric, would you open us up in prayer this morning, please? Amen. All right. At this time, I'd like to invite uh, Jim up, and he's going to be talking to us about our 125 years of celebration. Thank 
Thank you, Mike. It is good to be with, uh, see each one of you this morning and for us to be gathered and a special time as we celebrate 125 years uh, of our church being here. Uh, just a few thoughts that I wanted to share with you uh, about that and uh, what we're doing and involved in it. Acts 1.8, Jesus' last time that he would be with his disciples, he passed on the word for them and for us. But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and in Samaria, and into the uttermost parts of the earth. In 1896, a group of believers stayed true to this command. They believed there should be a church in the St. Clair community, and so began an effort to carry out Jesus' words and Jesus' commands. St. Clair began first as a union church, but 90 years later, uh, they formed a separate Baptist church uh, that was to be here, Baptist congregation. I thought about it as I looked at it and, and read back across it. Uh, what's, what's been the real power of this church that has kept it functioning and kept it reaching out for all those years? There were and are believers with an understanding heart. They had a desire to reach the lost in this community. And they carried that desire out by the church and by their outreach. They believed in the power of a godly touch. And they were there to share that idea with all people. We still see it as we reach out, as we uh, go through our prayer efforts, through our caring for the community. They have across the years fixed their eyes on Jesus and they've kept that as their goal in all that they do, reaching out to make a difference. 125 years later, we're in a new building with a visible uh, site for our community. The question is, what is our potential in beginning, becoming his presence? in the world we live in today. 125 years later, we are those that have been placed here to continue what was going on in those days. What difference will we make as a church in the next 125 years? This morning, I wanted also, uh, I, I had talked to Emily earlier and asked her to do a picture of the original church. Uh, how many of y'all remember the original church? Sue and Marlene and Ray? <coughs> Barbara, you're older than any of them. Why aren't you? <laughs> how come you don't remember? Emily, would you bring up and show the picture? This will be in the back later with some other things with it, but I want you to see this that Emily has done. It'll be a reminder of that for us in the years to come. Thank you, and I appreciate you so much. The, uh, it's been, uh, Brother Jim had, uh, he had some old photographs, and Harold brought in an old photograph this morning of the church, which is what Emily had to go by, an older photograph, which is like the one Harold brought in, and, and also a printout, I guess, from the recent recognition of the church. So um, what an opportunity there. But I also want to think about um, just what Jim said, and I, I think he and Marlene have prepared some handouts uh, of the history of that too. And so in that handout, are these in the foyer? These yes. Okay. So you would want to get... supposed to be giving them out, but he's oh. looking at them. Oh, maybe you've already got it. Yeah, you, you probably got it, and it's got some chocolate fingerprints on it. So, um, But on the second page, it has a list uh, of all the pastors who have served at the church, except for the years of 1939 and 1946. There wasn't a record of that, so there's probably a story to go along with that. Maybe they took the records and run it. Um, but I counted up. There's 25 different pastors uh, who have served at St. Clair Baptist Church since the inception there, of course, 
way back being that Union Church, and there were some shared uh, different uh, positions there of who preached on what Sunday, different things there with the Methodists. Um, but this time of year, and probably a little bit before, uh, is our pastor appreciation recognition time. Now, I'll say about pastor appreciation, like I remind Michelle about Valentine's Day. Uh, I don't wait till one time of year to tell you I love you, and I don't want to give all those flowers. Is anybody here on the flower shop? Okay. Uh, I don't want to wait till you know, one time of year to give you flowers and tell you that. So hopefully we don't wait till one time of year to tell Jim how much we appreciate Jim. But today would be a great day uh, to make that extra effort to let Jim know what he does and how much you appreciate that. Uh, and hopefully you do, uh, because he's, he's very busy. And if you want to sit down with him sometime and find out what a week looks like in his schedule, uh, you'll see that he is really pastoring uh, his flock. And so we are very thankful to have Brother Jim. We loved he and Marlene. Um, not loved. We love he and Marlene. And she is very diligent about uh, putting that prayer list together uh, each week, uh, taking the calls in about that, keeping up with all that. So they're very busy. They love you greatly, and I know you know that, so just wanted to recognize that and give them a hand this morning. Um, I, I think Jim would say he don't want any kind of presence or anything, but I'm sure he would feel uh, heartfelt just to uh, be reminded of our love for he and Marlene and for uh, what they do for us. Thank you, Brother Jim. Thank you, Marlene, uh, for that. So at this, ta- this time, I will turn it over to Brother Phil. He has a couple songs for us.
we are celebrating our 125th anniversary this morning, and as a part of that, and as part of our, we put together that and homecoming and uh, our Thanksgiving all into one, and uh, it's customary to have, when you do this, to have uh, one of your former pastors back, and uh, happy this morning to have Brother Harold, he's with us every Sunday, one of our most faithful members, but uh, he has been a dear friend across the years, and just my joy to introduce him, and he brought his own congregation with him this morning, so he's doing well. Brother Harold, would you come and lead us in worship? Well, happy Thanksgiving. What are you thankful for this morning? The Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This is some of the things I want us to think about this morning. You know, we know that God sent His Son, Jesus, who made a sacrifice for you and I. He paid a debt that I couldn't pay for myself by shedding His blood so that we could have a relationship with our Heavenly Father. I want us to look for a few moments this morning in the book of Revelation. I enjoy studying Revelation. If you do a research on it, you'll find that Revelation is divided in two main divisions. Chapter 11, uh, 1 through 11 is one division. The second division is chapter 12 through 22. In the first division, it is broken down in three sections. In the second division, it is broken down in four sections. And I want us to look at uh, chapter 12, verse 1 through, if I can get stopped here, this morning. It tells us in chapter 12, verse 1, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, traveling in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail grew the third part of the stars of heaven, and they cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, and to devour her son as soon as it was born. Let's pray. Father, we come before thee this morning to bow before thy throne of grace. Father, we pray this morning that you would speak through thy servant. And Father, give us an understanding of the things that Christ went through to guarantee his birth and to guarantee our salvation. And Father, we give you the praise and glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. As we think about the book of Revelation and what happened here, it's what we can see here. We know that this old serpent was an angel that God had created. He created <clears throat> Satan as the most beautiful angel that he had ever created. And because of his beauty, it went to his head, and he wanted to place himself above God. This is what God is telling us here. When we stop and think about, we know that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and he rose on the third day for our justification. <coughs> Through our faith in that, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, we can have a new birth. Our sins will be forgiven us. But we stop to, or we fail to think about the things that Christ went through to guarantee his birth. We can see here that the woman, the church, was ready to give birth to a son, 
to a child. This was the Lord Jesus Christ. She was in labor pain. As we can see here, I'm standing before her, we can see Satan. He's trying his best to keep Christ from being born. When we stop and think about it, I think about it over in Job. God called a meeting with all the angels. And he asked Satan, where have you been? He said, walking up and down through the earth. If you turn over into Genesis, the third chapter, verse 15, we can see some of the things here that Satan had been doing. It tells us in verse 15, 315, and he said, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shall bruise his heel. We know that God created the heavens and the earth in five days, and every time he had created something, he looked at it and he said, it is good. But then on the sixth day, he created man. As he looked at man, he couldn't find anything that would be suitable for a helpmate. So he took a rib from the man's chest and he made woman to be a helpmate. I use this often when I'm performing wedding ceremony. This is for husbands or to keep their wives. You know, he didn't take a... Mm -hmm. uh, bone out the foot so we're not to walk upon them. He didn't take a, a knee bone, but he took a rib from under man's arm. And this is where we are to keep our women. We are to love them, to nurture them, and to keep them under our arms to protect them. But here we can see here, Satan is trying to keep Christ from being born. If he could keep Christ from being born, then he would be victorious and you and I wouldn't have a Redeemer. He knew God's plans. If you go back to Matthew's chapter 1 or 2, we can see a genealogy here where Christ had to be born through these seeds. If Satan could eliminate one of these genealogy, then he would have been victorious and Christ would not have been born. Over in Luke, it goes all the way back to Adam, the genealogy. Satan knew this, and if he could have kept Christ from being born through this genealogy, then he would have been victorious, and you and I would have been sent to hell. I want us to think about in Genesis here a minute, See an example here of what happened. God created Adam and Eve. And he put them in the Garden of Eden. Perfect. It's a picture of our second heaven uh, when God comes back, I, I believe. But here he gave him everything and he gave him one commandment. He said, you can eat of all the fruit of the trees except the one in the center of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat of it, thou surely would die. Oh, Satan came by, and he asked Eve a question. He said, can you eat of all the trees, of the fruit of the trees in your garden? She said, oh yes. She said, oh, except the one in the center of the one that, of the truth of good and knowledge. If we eat of it, we will die. Satan said, oh, surely, you know, real calm. Surely. He didn't mean that. Surely you wouldn't die. He knows that the day that you eat of it, you would be like God. You would know good from evil. So she touched the tree. It was pleasant to the eye. It was good to touch, and it was good for taste. In my personal opinion, all her sins come from these three things. The eye, the touch, 
and the taste. If you go back and study it, I, this is me. All sins, I think, <coughs> develop from there. So she looked at it, it was pleasant. She touched it, and she tasted it. And then she gave to Adam. I believe that Adam knew that he would die. But I think he loved Eve so much that he chose to eat and die instead of spending eternity without her. So here we can see here, this is, what? <clears throat> so this car started the conflict between Satan and our Lord. Our Lord was fighting to keep and make sure that he had a birth. He knew the plans. Satan knew the plans. God had a plan before he created the heavens and the earth. So here we can see there was a conflict started. If we go through the scripture, we can find many, many conflicts. There's conflict in the Old Testament all the way through. I hope that when you start studying the uh, Old Testament, I want you to look at the conflict between Christ and Satan. The first thing we can see here, God gave him two sons, Cain and Abel. I think most of you probably know the story of what happened. It came time to make a sacrifice. Abel was a keeper of the sheep, a herdsman. Cain was a farmer, a harvest. So when it came time to make the sacrifice, Cain took the harvest and he offered to God. But Abel took his first animal a blood sacrifice, and he offered it to God. God accepted the blood sacrifice, but he rejected the harvest. Why? I had a hard time understanding this when I became a Christian. But it was a blood sacrifice pointing to Jesus, what he was going to do one day by shedding his blood so that you and I could have forgiveness of our sins. They was out in the field. Cain became very angry. This is how Satan works. He deals with us. He deals with people. Because he's a spirit. He's powerful. So Cain was upset. Because God rejected his offering and accepted Abel. So he rose up and he killed Abel. So it seemed like right off the hand, Satan is victorious. Because there were just two, and he's already killed one of them. Cain is a sinner. So it looked like Satan won. But look what happened. God gave him another son, Seth. So here, Satan was defeated there because the lion was going through Seth's mouth. And then we, we move on down. Several years later, a hundred years, the land was full of people. And God looked down and it grieved him because he had made man. The only ones that he could find was Noah. Because God because Noah trusts in God. So he decided he would destroy everything on earth by a flood. At that time, it never had rain from heaven. But he told Noah, he said, I want you to build an ark. You build the way I tell you to build. When we stop and think about it, it took him 120 years to build it. But because of his faith in God, he done it. The ark had three stories. It makes me think of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When we look at it, also it had one door. Jesus said over there, he said, I'm the door. If anybody enter, he through the door. 
And this was the only way that you could get in the ark but through the door. You know the story probably how that God brought the animals in and Noah, his wife, and three sons and their wives, eight souls. And the water came down from heaven. The ark also had one window on top of it. This reminds me the only way that we can have salvation is by looking up to heaven. To our Lord and Savior. It seemed that Satan was going to be victorious there because all the people were sinners. Except Noah and his family. So Satan got kicked down again. Think about it. It goes on over to Abraham. You know, you know the story of Abraham. At 75 years of age, God told Abraham, go to where I tell you, and I will make you a great nation. Abraham, or Abram at that time, he believed God. Didn't know where he was going. But he believed that God was going to keep his word. And you know the story there. How after 12, 14 years or something, that sir, she had given up on God. So she came up with a scheme. Take my handmaid so that you can have seed. So Abram didn't fuss about it. He took his handmaid and had a son. But this wasn't God's plan. Abram kept on said, God, I don't have any heirs. How, how can I be a father of many nations and so on? No heir. But when he was 99 years of age, he told Abram, and changed his name to Abraham. And he gave him a son, Isaac. It seemed like Satan was going to be victorious there for all these years. But God came to keep his promise. As we can see on down, I'm just skipping. This sermon could be preached a thousand years and still be going. I think about David. It was promised that the air would come through David. Think about what David went through as a child. 15, 14, 15 years old. His father sent him down to take some food to his brothers who was in war. He got down there and here was this giant. <clears throat> what changed was a 14, 15 year old child fighting a giant. I'm sure old Satan said, but I got you now. I got you now, Christ, you're not going to be born, Jesus. But you know the story there, how that David went down and Took him five stones and the old giant came out. And, you know, why send a kid against me? So he didn't put all his armor back. I bet old Satan, when David went down, I bet he kind of grinned some here. I've got you now. But you know the story right there, how that David took his string shot hit the giant between the eyes and he fell down and then he took the giant sword and cut his head off. Satan fell again. But you know the story there of David how that all the things then saw him in to play the instrument. And he became jealous. See how Satan used people for became angry. He got jealous. 
So he tried to throw his spears through David. Not once, but twice. I think most of us know the story of David. He was a man of God's own heart. God protected him. Now then, let's jump on over. A Mary, a young girl, virgin. The Lord appeared to her and told her, you're going to have a son. His name is going to be Jesus. He's going to be the Savior. She said, how can this be? I know not her. She was engaged to the man by the name of Joseph. Both of them from the line hard right up from Abraham up. They hadn't broken this line yet, the genealogy. But anyway, Joseph, he was going to put her away. At that time, for being unfaithful while they was engaged, could be dead. But Joseph didn't want to do that. He was going to put her away privately. But then an angel came and spoke to Joseph one night. Told him not to be afraid. That she was going to bear the son of God. Jesus. And he took her. And they went ahead, you know, the story, they got married. But they didn't sleep together until after Christ was born. I'm thinking about the rise men seeing the stars in the east. God sent them. They didn't know for sure where the Christ was going to be born. So they went to the king in Jerusalem. And they asked him, said, where is the Christ? Where is the king born? <laughs> oh, oh, Satan uses this again. Jealousy. So he ordered well, you go and find him and come back and tell me so that I can go worship him too. But God spoke to the wise men and sent him out. You know, the star came back out and led him to Jesus. They found him in the manger. But God spoke to him. Don't go back to the king. You go, well, I'll show you. And they did. And then the king pointed to all the children, boys, two years and down to be put to death. Surely old Satan is going to be victorious. Yeah. All the boys, so Jesus would have been put to death. He wouldn't have been able to go to the cross. You and I would still have no redeemer. But God came to his rescue. And he sent him out. We have a mighty God. We have a wonderful God. Christ was guaranteeing his birth so that you and I didn't have to spend eternity in hell. This is the God that we serve. Then we can see here after Jesus was born and came back to Jerusalem, even God's chosen people, supposedly, Satan entered their mind trying to have Jesus put to death because he knew if he went to the cross, Satan would be there. And you know the story. 
He was beaten more than any human being could ever. Jesus was God, but he was also human. If God hadn't been with him, if he hadn't been God, then Satan would have been victorious because he would, couldn't have withstood the beating that he had been beaten. But he went to the cross. Shed his blood so that I could have a relationship and spend eternity with my Heavenly Father. Satan was defeated. If we go on down through these next two, three chapters here, we can see where he turned from trying to keep Christ from being born. He was defeated there, and he turned his attention to destroy the church. To keep you and me from telling somebody else. He is powerful. I'm going to share this with you, and then I'll stop. Week before last, a man called me from Colorado Springs. He bought a property up on White Creek on the other side. And he said he needed to meet with somebody up there about his septic system. He didn't know anything about it. He would be in this past week if I could come by. I got up last Monday morning and during my prayer I said, Father, I said, uh, give me somebody that I can witness to today. Because the week before I hadn't had an opportunity. That evening I called the gentleman up there and I asked him, I said, are you home? And he said, yes. So I said, I'll be up there in about 15 minutes. And so I went up and we got together and we went over what he had done and what he was planning to do. Uh, the worst job I have ever seen, if the time ever comes. So we got done. I said, sir, I said, uh, what type of work do you do? He said, I'm a pacemaker. He said, I help doctors. I said, well, I said, uh, how do you stand to Jesus? He said, I don't go to church much. I said, well, I don't need a pacemaker, but I said, I have had an experience. I said, and I told him about my accident. I said, uh, three years ago, August 16, I went through step by step. I said, then a month later, on the 19th, I had a bleeding in the brain. I said, uh, I did had a brain surgery. I said, got real good. They sent me down to the life care center after a few days. I said, about 10 days later uh, from my surgery, I came home. On Saturday morning, I fell out of bed. I said, I think my wife pushed me out. <laughs> but I said, probably I had a seizure, maybe, I don't know. They got me up, and I said, I did good all day. And I said, that night, about 7 o'clock, I started to the bathroom, and I got to the hall door. And I said, 
I don't know how Sue got me back, but I don't remember anything else for five, six days. He said, I had an infection. He said, 1%. And this is what the doctor had told Sue and me about that. One percent of change to get back. I said, well, the doctors didn't do it. I said, my church, me people, came up every day, according to what my wife and children tells me. And I said, they prayed for me. And they were singing a song. Victory in Jesus. I said, after about four or five days, I came through. Felt good. You know what he said? He said, that is a powerful story. I said, yes. God did it. I wanted to tell somebody about it, how God had answered my prayers. Monday morning, I said, give me a chance to witness somebody. <laughs> that afternoon, he did. I held up, I went, but on Tuesday, on Wednesday, <coughs> I called Brother Jim. I had to tell somebody about it, how God had answered your prayers, just like And I shared with Brother Jim on the phone. This was about 9 o'clock, I think. At 10 o'clock, made Satan mad and hell broke loose against me. Thank you, Lord. If Satan hadn't been on you, you need to start witnessing for Jesus. This is what I'm thankful for. This Thanksgiving. I was on my way to hell. Satan had me. But because of my wife praying for me for 20 years, God answered her prayers. I was sitting in a bar one night, Daytona Beach, about 10.30, and God spoke to me. He said, I'm tired of putting up with you. You get yourself straight with me and get back in your family. And I heard it. Next Sunday after that, I was here and I was ready to go to church. And about three months later, God saved me. I've been much happier in church than I have anywhere else. This is what I'm thankful for this morning. God forgive me of my sins. It don't mean I'm perfect, I still sin. But he forgave those too when Jesus went to the cross. Amen. And he gave me a family that I'm happy with. So what else could I ask for? If you're here today and if you haven't accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're not for four seconds getting a new address. It can be heaven or hell. 
It all depends on what you believe. <clears throat> Father, we come before thee this morning to thank you, to praise your name. We love you, Father, because of what you have done for us. And Father, we pray today that everyone in this house has had that personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. If not, let the Holy Spirit stir their conscience and call you to repent. And we'll give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Sure stand.